please uh like please show your video if you are able to so that we see who the panelists are um great yeah, i yeah. see people showing up Uh, I'll just wait a little bit. I mean, I guess the talks was over a little earlier, so I thought we start first. Um, but we can also wait a bit if the panelists aren't around at this time. But if you are here, please show your video so that we know you're here. Thanks. Great, I guess we are waiting on two more people. Um, so, oh, or just one more person, I think. Uh, let's wait until like for three more minutes until 50 minutes and then we'll start. Oh, actually, I think everyone's here. Okay, let's just get started then. So um, I'll first introduce myself. So I'm Jennifer, one of the organizers for the Affective Understanding Video Workshop. And we just, of course, want to congratulate um, your four teams for being on the top of the EV Challenge Leaderboard. So for this panel, we are going to be going through some prepared questions, as well as questions from the audience. Um, and if you're in the audience to ask a question, you can raise your hand in a Zoom call or use a chat feature on Zoom or a Google form. So for the first part, uh, let's have all the panelists introduce themselves. Um, like, so what's your name, what your affiliation is, and maybe say a few sentences about like your model just to give a recap for everyone else. Uh, let's start with the first place team. Yes, so hello everyone. My name is Van Kampen from John Namas University, South Korea. So our solution with the title by on the camera of personal neural network and personal encoding. So uh, our solution uh, is the first play on the EV uh, with the board. So uh, our model have two main parts. The first is the feature extraction. It's beyond the retain model on the image net and the audio set. And the second part is the temporal module. It's uh, based on the temporal conversational network. And we also has uh, one more dimensional to the feature that is the personal information. That to uh, uh, let the model know how uh, how, we, how much the difference between uh, two task time in the English one. As uh, we may know in the EV training and uh, validation set, uh, we have some task time that do not have the uh, annotation that we did not during the training. So it will make the English, it will make the English one discontinued. So that's the one keyboard that uh, help us to achieve the best, Better score on the uh, private test. That's fun. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's go to the runner up team. Uh, mm -hmm. Is a team for less is more here? Oh, yeah, yes, we're here. Oh, okay, cool. Um, Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Ko Zhou Ling in, from um, Zhejiang University, and I'm an undergraduate. And our method primarily involves uh, training a 
uh, RNA-based model on one hertz sampling of the videos and use linear interpolation to generate the final six hertz um, predictions. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to the multi-granularity network team. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Bam Yang from Alibaba Group. I, I'm a algorithm engineer. Uh, uh, and my uh, solution is uh, the multi gravity network with model tension in dense effective understanding. Yes. Thank you. Um, let's go to the 3D CNN to predict evoked expressions from video scene. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chen Zhang uh, from OPPO Research Institute. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks for your introductions. So actually, um, for the first question is actually for all the teams. So if you like have any thoughts, just unmute and jump in. Um, so the first question that we got was, what are some challenges that you had while developing your solution? And in particular, was there anything that you tried that was like sort of unexpected as you were working through your solutions? Would any team like to start? Okay, if I'm getting no volunteers, I'm just gonna go in opposite order. So let's start from this 3D CNN team. Um, Chen Zhang, I think. Uh, Do you need me to repeat the question? Uh, let me know if you're having technical difficulties also, and I'm happy to move on to someone else. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess like I'll first repeat the question and then maybe let's start from a third place team. So the question was, what are some challenges that you had while developing your solution and was there anything that was unexpected? Um, and let's just start from the third place team, the multi-granularity network team. Um, oh yeah, thanks. Uh, just uh, could you, uh, could you please repeat repeat the uh, the question? Yeah. So the question was, what are some challenges that you had while developing your solution? Like, so what was something that was difficult when you were creating your model? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I think uh, as the data set is, is predicted by a, a, by a trained model uh, from the, 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 the face picture of the picture of the face of the viewers, uh, I think uh, hence the label is very noisy and it is uh, easy to oh, uh, easy to overfit uh, the data set, and uh, the model will be uh, can't be general general while in the test set. I think it's uh, it's the most difficult uh, for us to train the model. Thanks. Uh, that's all. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, did the second place team want to have anything to add? on your solution.
Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, we also experienced some instability during the training process. Uh, our model did not converge to the same point um, during different training sessions. And another thing is that, uh, as we have stated in our reports, uh, we use L1 loss, but in our tests after the challenge, we found out that the KO divergence also works and uh, results in a better validation correlation but we cannot test it on the final test set. Okay, thank you. Um, and what about the first place team, the temporal convolutional network team? Yeah, actually, uh, the most part in for the future detector has been take a lot of time for us to uh, experiment on the first, some, the first uh, the some first day that we start with the challenge. And for the second part is about the log function. As uh, um, the traditional method, as the traditional trend on the dynamic work that we use the uh, object function, the, the metric function, the, the log function corresponding to the metric function to apply the network as in here is the correlation score. But at the, at the uh, experiment, um, we can say that the when we do the direct the uh, matrix as the last function, we can achieve the uh, very good score on the training as well as the validation. But uh, if you go up aside on the test set, that we may have the negative score. So that uh, takes uh, a lot of time to try to analyze how, how it does. But if it does success, so we back to the traditional Last that is the missed my errors. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there's actually like um, another question that's a bit on the other side, which is that was there anything you tried that seems the most promising? So like, is there any particular part of your model that you think helped a lot, like in you achieving your final? good spot on the leaderboard. Um, and let's start with the first place team on this one. Yeah, actually in uh, our block, the key boy is the Bosnian input team. So as uh, in the present, we can say uh, that uh, we, set that, we set that in the, uh, let us say the training and validation, we have some has time that we could have the annotation using the error in the annotation for rest. As we can see in the, the set the grip on the GitHub, but for the um, test set, we need to reduce on the time span. So um, it had we need to consider how much the different between two has time in the input sequence for training. As in the LSTM or the, the temporal temporal model, uh, the time. The output of time t is then on the output of time t minus one or time t minus two. And in here, due to the discontinuity of the label, so the difference between two, uh, two time stamps in the input sequence may be uh, different, maybe two or three or one, something. So we need to let the network know how much the difference to take care of this here. And, uh, during the take care of it during the training and leverage on the test set to get the factor result. That's I all. see. Thank you. Um, does the less is more team have anything to add? Uh, I guess. Like, so I can repeat the question. So the question was, was there anything that seemed the most promising in your model? Like any particular component you think that helped a lot in producing the correlation, like higher correlations value you had relative to the other entries on the leaderboard. Um, and in the paper, less is more sparse sampling for dense reaction predictions. Did your team um, find anything that you want to comment on for this question? 
Oh, I think the most important part uh, is the linear interpolation part. It's almost doubled our performance, the correlation score on the final test set. I see, thank you. Um, what about the third place team, the multi-granularity networks? Uh, okay, uh, I think the most important part in our solution is uh, multi-granularity and multi-modal feature. As we do many works uh, to find the most effective model features. Uh, and we start with the uh, visual features and uh, after we introduce uh, audio feature and the subtitle features and it, our performance is increased uh, very large. Yes, Thank, that's all. Thanks. What about the 3D CNN team? Uh, we, we, we think the most promos, uh, prom uh, promising part in our method is the loss function. Because uh, at the beginning, we just uh, uh, directly use the loss function, the L1 loss and L2 loss, but the performance is, uh, was not good. Then I added the Pearson coefficient as a penalty index. Then the uh, performance of our model are uh, become uh, becoming very good. So we, we think the it is the very important part in our method. Thank you. Um, I think from this discussion, it's really interesting that different teams had different things that were very helpful. For example, adding different modalities or doing sampling or like different loss functions. I wonder if like, if all the methods were combined, we could do even better on this data set. Um, okay, I guess uh, there's another question, which is that what are some of the things that you think would work well for this task, but you just didn't get time to try? Because I know the challenge was like a few weeks. So like, what are some of the future directions you think might be interesting? Does anyone want to jump in on this question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my opinion, so one approach can achieve the better result that we directly uh, frame in the file, file, file approach to improve it. We can directly uh, frame the audio and virtual model together at the same time as in the, as I say, in the less and more, uh, the, uh, next, the, in the less and more approach that. And in the baseline that we train the three kind of uh, feature uh, phase, the uh, virtual information and the audio at the same time. But in my approach that I did not try is mm -hmm. due to some uh, limited on the computational result. So we can try, uh, we have another kind of uh, work that in, in currently we only use one half time, uh, or one frame in the time, in the uh, one divided by six time span, second one divided by six second to you at the virtual feature but for the audio that we use the whole segment, which include the temporal information. But currently we did not include it, so we may we may try with uh, is we use the five frame at the at each time span to get the temporal like the mean as standard deviation uh, directly deal with the temporal model. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it would be interesting to see like how the method can be further improved for sure. Um, what about the second place team for less is more? Is there anything that you guys wish you had more time to test? That would be really interesting for future directions. Um, during the process, we noticed that the order of magnitude of each emotion is different. So we tried to add to do the um, score prediction in two steps. The first is for the, uh, for the whole video, we predict a base, uh, like an average score for each emotion. And then during the process, we just predict the variations. Uh, we had this idea, but we didn't finish it. I actually like that idea a lot. Cause yeah, like in the data set, I did notice that as well. Um, so I do think that like if say the expressions were really close to the average, 
that like your model just has to learn the residual instead of like where the average is. So like, mm -hmm. I think that's a really interesting. Yes. Yeah, like thing to explore. Um, yeah, thank you. What about multi-granularity networks? Anything you wish you had time to do? Uh, yes. Uh... I think uh, as our solution uh, use pre, uh, use the pre-trained features uh, as uh, in Ibnet or in uh, YouTube 100 a million, I think if we can, we could uh, uh, train the model end-to-end, uh, -end, maybe the performance could be improved. improved. But uh, the uh, computing uh, consuming is too large. And the second uh, second one is um, <clears throat> the our model is easy to overfit to the training set and if we if we can uh, if we can decrease the, the the overfitting maybe the performance could be further improved that's all yeah thanks i think one thing that could help with that is like a bigger data set too because like this problem like you guys all saw and like tried is like really complex and so i think for overfitting if the training set was like very large, then that might help as well. Thanks for your thoughts. Um, okay, what about the 3D CNN team? For, uh, for our team, I think is the TCN model because uh, we, we, we didn't use the TCN model in our submission, but uh, we want to, uh, try that model, but we, we, we didn't have more time. But we see uh, other teams or use the, the TCM model and the performance is good. Yeah, so uh, we, we will try that next time. Yeah, I definitely agree. There's so many like architectures that like it's easy to run out of time on these challenges. Um, but if you do get time to try it, you can still submit to our challenge page and then see how it looks because our challenge evaluator is still up. Um, all right, I guess there's like a different sort of question for you guys. So like as you were working with um, the data set and like doing this expression prediction task, you know, the dense predictions on each frame, what do you think you might want to see in future iterations of the data set? Like what, what in the data set would make it more interesting to you or make the problem, like say, easier? Uh, and anyone feel free to jump in. Otherwise, I'm going to call on people. Um, OK, I'm going to start backwards. Uh, the 3D CNN team, do you have any comments? on like what you would like to see in future iterations of the data set? Uh, we, uh, we, we, we don't have any suggestions, sorry. I, we, we think the data set now is, uh, it is, it is good. Oh yeah, no problem. It was more like yeah. a longer term question just to see your thoughts as participants and like users of it. Um, but thank you. Uh, what about the multi-granularity networks team? Oh, uh, I think if the topic or the theme of the video is provided, uh, then more information will be get uh, because then it will be will be much easier for the expression prediction. Right, because uh, if I recall, your team used. Um, a lot of different modalities, right? Including subtitles. So like, I guess, yeah. and in your experiments, I think adding each modality increased your correlation score. So like, I guess yeah. you're saying you could use a theme as an additional like modality to, to increase the score even further. Yeah, that would be, yes. yeah, yes. that would be interesting to see. Thanks. Um, what about the less is more team? I, I think it, it would be great if in the future iteration of the data set, the noise of the neighbors um, maybe can be reduced. Like um, there is a lot of continuous zero labels in the, in the training data. Um, 
and another thing that is it's hard for the model to fit this kind of data things yeah that makes sense i guess you guys um sort of got around it by doing the sub sampling but if there was no noise in the training data in the first place then like i suppose you wouldn't need to do a sub sampling like that was why you introduced it right mm, yes okay yeah that makes sense thank you uh what about the first place team yeah, so as we can see on the evaluation for this uh, kind of regression, we can see that some regression has a high score and uh, some regression, in the other hand, it had the negative score. So we can see that has, the data set has a very imbalance on the, the uh, label. So currently, we judge uh, the average on the score with the equal weighting. So how about in the future if we organize a the challenge that we weighted average that so the we have uh, considered more on the uh, the 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 the, the, the minor class that have the ne negative score so we can balance on the score like we have on the F1 scores uh, for the classification and in here for the correlation we uh, that way of the uh, major class and the uh, up way of the minor class, so the score we you know, must minimum. Thank you. Um, I guess like thanks to also everybody for the suggestions. Like we'll definitely take that into account and think about how like we can better improve our data set in the future as well. So there is a question um specifically for the first place team uh so like i guess actually we talked about this in the poster session this morning but since everyone is here right now can you comment on why the positional encoding it's so important your model architecture and maybe explain that a little more yeah actually in, in the last block we said that in the data set we have some program that can all now addition, now an addition that uh, we have the zero star for uh, on of the emotion. So we ignore the kind of timestamp. So the in what sequence, the, the how we do we have some uh, we will be continuous. We will be bit continuous. So for example, we have the custom one, two, three, and we will have a four and five, custom four, five, six, have a zero score for on emotion. So we uh, it's now uh, four, five, and six, and we uh, add the seven, eight, ten, eight, nine, ten, something like that. And we can see the difference between two timestamp is one, 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 and is uh, one, two, three, and it will reveal to again one, one, one. So that will be the uh, up, uh, uh, abnormal on the for you with the uh, LSTM or the PCN that we can say is uh, in is defined or uh, is the uh, define of LTFTM that the uh, output of time t it depend on output of time t minus one, t minus two, or t minus three. And in here, for example, at the time a, we only have the time uh, one, two, and three, and we do the uh, one, two, and three in four. Okay. and we do not have the five, six, four, five, six, and six one. So it much uh, gap here. So I think that is the reason that the LSTM or the, or the temporal model will is not uh, take care of it. But for the, on the test set, that on the, we need to uh, uh, take account on the house stamp. Yeah. So it's one reason. And in here, we do the positional encoding. It's just a symbol that we uh, fit onto the network at time time. For example, in here we have the uh, one divided by six and two divided by six or three divided by six to the sequence. And the network will know the current time time, the current the current uh, time time and the next time time how uh, how how much is the difference. So it will take care of this and it will uh, also bring that to the test set. And yeah, thank you for um, the explanation. 
Uh, there's a question for the um, less is more team as well. So here, um, like the sparse sampling used, the sparse sampling strategy used is like really interesting. Do you think like adaptively sampling with different frame gaps could work even better? Um, and could you comment a bit more on the other sampling strategies that you've tried? Uh, the less is more second place team. Um, should I repeat the question? Oh, uh, mm, mm, there, there's no need to re repeat the question. I'm just okay, wondering, sure. uh, uh, the, adapt, uh, the adaptive process you mean, uh, um, can you ex uh, maybe uh, explain more about the adaptive process you mean in your question? Yeah, so I think um, what it means is that, like, I think that in your paper you mentioned you were evenly sampling, like. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, but I guess it's possible to choose frames that maybe the model is more confident with, or frames that you think there's less noise, and then choose different gaps for sampling. Do you think a strategy like that might help in this data set? And what were some of the other sampling strategies that you might have thought of? Uh, uh, I think it might help. Um, so, um, to, and the 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 the, uh, the sparse sampling many deal with many deal with the noise labels in the uh, in the training data. Uh, like it, like if there's a continuous zeros in the data, um, if we do the adaptive process, I don't think uh, our model can judge whether uh, whether the data is usable from the video itself because we don't have the relative information. What were some of the other sampling strategies that you tried? Like, I think you mentioned some in your paper, but maybe like you could talk about it for a bit so that everyone can um, hear about them. Um, so uh, in our paper, we used uh, one hertz sampling. Uh, another another method, method we didn't mention in the paper is that we can use one hertz sampling, but we use an offset. Uh, as for now, we use uh, we just sample the start frame of the six frames. Uh, if we use offset like zero, one, two, three, four, five, then we merge the results. That's equivalent to uh, dense sampling, but just we do do it six times, so we got the final six hertz. I see, uh, but that I, didn't work as well as the one hertz one, right? Oh. I'm guessing. As, as, as a matter of fact, we didn't have enough time to try this method either. Uh, yeah, it would be really interesting to see that. But of course, if the data set had like less noise, then like, I guess you wouldn't need, I guess your hypothesis is that you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need to do the sampling anymore. Mm. I see. Uh, I think another assumption is that uh, the emotion is, the emotion, the change with the emotion is not that, intense so we can do the lower lower rate sampling lower sampling rate i see that makes sense um yeah thanks uh okay so i guess the next question is for the multi-granularity network team okay so this question is that like in your model you considered um, a lot of different modalities and temporal windows. And that was really interesting. Like your subtitle features also used like BERT, I think, which is pretty cool. Um, do you think one direction for future work in this area is to add like more modalities and like, you know, use other maybe pre-trained models or like, do you think video and audio should be able to do this task?
could you repeat the last uh, yeah. question? I yeah. Don't Right. Yeah, no, of course. So in your paper, you investigated a lot of different modalities. Like, so yes. a lot of the teams looked at, say, just video and audio, but your team also looked at, you know, subtitles and actions. Um, and that was pretty interesting. So do you think one direction of future work in this, like, expression prediction area is to, like, look at a lot more different modalities and add those information into training the model? Or do you think, you know, maybe video and audio is a way to go based on your experiments? Okay. Uh, I think, I think um, for expression prediction, um, more module uh, feature could be helpful and uh, how to find the, the, the most effective and the most uh, correlated feature is very important for uh, for us to establish uh, the relationship between the video content and the viewer's expression. I think uh, maybe it's promising. Yes, and the, only the visual and the audio feature uh, is not enough to predict uh, the uh, as a expression of the viewer uh, and uh, more uh, model more models is uh, is needed yeah uh, that's all mm. uh, I guess a follow-up question is how did you choose like subtitle and action like modalities like how did you know what to add uh Uh, uh, first, um, uh, um, we uh, we uh, we download uh, we uh, view these uh, different uh, different models uh, from the training dataset and find uh, first for the subtitles it may be some uh, semantic information from the from the subtitles as we think is maybe useful. So we uh, add it to the model and find it, uh, it, it could imp improve our performance. And uh, for the, uh, for the uh, human behavior or uh, temporal feature, and we, this is the exper experience from our other <laughs> project. Uh, it's, it's very helpful, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and well, so this question is going to be for the 3D CNN team. Um, and for this question, um, I guess in your talk, you mentioned that you did sampling and some thresholding in the beginning um, before you trained the model. How did you choose like that sampling stage and the thresholds? Uh, yeah, we, we just uh, uh, try a lot of uh, different thresholds and yeah, it's, it's a little bit uh, empirical, <laughs> yeah. I see. Um, and was your model trained from scratch? Like you didn't use any pre-trained models, right? Uh, we, we just use, uh, for our visual model, we use a pre-trained model for CSN. It's uh, released uh, uh, from Facebook. I, I think it's a very, yeah. Oh, but for your audio model, did you also use a pre-trained model? Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we didn't use pre-trained model on our model pathway, yeah. I see, so just for video. Um, yeah. Just was that? I see. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I guess I am actually going to loop back to the first place team again, because uh, there's one question here that says, 
like in your paper, um, you mentioned that you would like to investigate the interaction between video and audio modalities. Um, could you expand more on like the types of interaction that you would expect to like explore? Yeah, uh, actually in that uh, kind of uh, interaction, we have uh, two, two abrupt. The first is we then an end-to-end -end network and we did not use the we can filter uh, something, but we can use the, we can change from scratch. Uh, we uh, use a return way and we need to type tune. And the second is uh, we use a lock function, the weighted lock function, the, the learnable lock function to adjust the, uh, the, the way of the virtual and the audio. Of, uh, uh, the virtual and the audio uh, architecture. So this means uh, beside the final lot that we have the separate lot, for example, the lot for the audio, the lot for the video, and the total lot that is the weighted average with the learnable uh, weight, with a learnable weight. So as small, the alpha and beta is depend on the uh, the the river, the 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 way uh, depend on the hours of the network uh, we can do in terms of uh, attention of the network and we can in the end of end so the anti and bad time we change and it will we will have the parallel interaction between two models that is the last output we also can have the middle output so instead of uh do the output the output of the temporal module the last FC layer followed by the temporal module, we can view the directly the output of the, um, the special information. I mean, the output of the virtual and audio, and we directly add the fully connected layer and uh, output the store, and we will have maybe all five lots and we have it on them with the learnable point. Yeah. That's I see. Call. Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess moving on to the second place team for less is more, you actually mentioned uh, a few directions of future work in your paper as well. So like you talked about some losses and tasks um, you would like to explore with your model. Could you comment a bit more on what you think like your future works might look like? Um, I guess I can give a bit more context if you'd like. So like, uh, I guess in your paper, let me just open it really quick. I think you mentioned that there are like different loss functions and other tasks that are related to this. Um, actually, you mentioned that in your video as well, I think, where you said relay works are like action recognition or like other types of video understanding tasks. Like, so do you see that your future direction would be applying these models to like other video understanding tasks as well? Like, do you think your same model can be trained for other video understanding tasks uh, for the second place team? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yes, I think it might be applicable. Uh, mm, uh, like in task, like uh, 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 I think I in the paper mentioned about uh, sign language recognition. Uh, yeah. So, so the same model might also be used on that uh, to do uh, like uh, frame level and annotations of the video about what uh, what words it's it's speak it's speaking in the in a specific frame. Right, I guess. Um, so just to confirm my understanding as well. So in general, you're saying that your model could be applied to any uh, or I guess some video understanding tasks where the output labels are continuous. Like since you're training in a supervised way, you would just replace the training data then with say data from sign language recognition. Is that what you're saying? Uh, kind of, but I don't imply that it can be applied to every task like that. I just right, say yeah. that we, we can try this model on the task. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see where that goes. Thank you for the clarification too. Mm, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so for the multi-granularity network team, um, I guess like, like I think you had frame, clip, and video level like granularities for your features. Was there any particular one that you thought was more useful than the other ones, like during your experiments? Uh, I, I think uh, the most uh, the most uh, effective uh, feature is uh, is the frame level, then the clip level, and the video level, and and the this this is uh, tested uh, from the test set uh, because um, in uh, for the we should predict uh, the uh, frame level. Of uh, effect affection labels, and if we if the feature is in a large time scale, then the results will be smoothed, then the correlation score will will be lower. So, uh, the the dense frame uh, the frame level is also is in this uh, uh, way the frame level is very important. Uh, but the uh, clips level and video level please. Uh, provide a uh, very good uh, uh, context for the uh, for the pre uh, research for, for for the good uh, prediction result. That's that's all. Thank you. That's all the questions that we got uh, for the panel for now. So if anyone from the audience would like to ask any questions. Like you can do so in the chat or you can raise your hand. Um, and we'll wait like a couple of minutes to see if anyone asks questions. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I guess we can sign off in five minutes or so if we don't get any questions. Thanks to everyone for participating on the panel. It was great learning from your approaches. Okay, I think it's been like a minute and I didn't see any questions. Um, so I guess this is the last session of our workshop. So um, thanks everyone for coming and attending our workshop.
and we'll make the recordings um, available so that you can watch it afterwards. If you have any more questions, just reach out to us um, through the contact information on our website. And for anyone in the audience, if you want to submit questions later, you can still use a QR code to do this. Thanks a lot again, everyone, and congrats on being on top of the leaderboard. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.